What's going on, Guardians? It's Tizzle here. So just a quick life update. Uh, I won't have access to my PC till like Saturday at the earliest just because of like moving things and stuff. Uh, but I did want to talk about this Final Shape weapon tuning preview because I've seen, uh, I don't know, just some like conflicting information going around. So I've made some notes here and obviously this will be unscripted, but uh, these are kind of the points I want to hit on. And uh, I just want to talk about how this will actually affect things in game because there's a lot of changes all going on at once. So uh, let's start with the pulse rifle thing because this is a really good spot to start because they're kind of getting the most buffs and some of the buffs kind of negatively and positively impact them. So uh, if we look at the very top, uh, as you probably know, exotic primary weapons deal bonus damage to red bars. And this is getting reduced from 40% to 30% on every exotic minus fighting lion. So that's a big change that's going to affect every exotic primary in the game. And then if we look at pulse rifles, they're getting a increase in their base PVE damage by 20%. So that's a massive buff. But then if we scroll down just a little further, uh, somewhere there's a bonus just to red bars. Yeah, right here. So increased damage versus red bars, and this stacks with the PVE damage increase. So now they're getting 15% bonus to red bars. So if we times 1.2 by 1.15, that's a 38% buff that they're getting to red bars. See, and it says it right here uh, because they're getting 20% globally. So that'll be on like bosses, uh, champions, majors, minors, everything. And then 15% more just to red bars. But then again, we have this 40% to 30% and we don't know where that's going to take off from. So I kind of made a little example somewhere in my notes. So right here, 1.15 times 1.2 is 38%. They don't add their multiplicative. So if they added, it would be 35%. But then we can't really subtract because again, they're multiplicative. So if we took this 38% buff and then minus 10% for the exotic primary damage change, that would be 28%. But if we times by 0.9, that's actually a 24.2% buff. But then I note here, depending where they take it off and how everything stacks between, uh, so the damage buff would be between 24.2 and 28% buff. We won't know until we see concrete damage numbers. So again, because there's so many things changing, like this exotic buff, is it just a flat 10% reduction across the board? Uh, if so, it would be like times 0.9, so 24.2. Or again, we don't know exactly how the math will shake out. But regardless, they're getting a 24.2% buff at minimum um, and as high as 28%. But yeah, I just wanted to point that out that at least me, I don't exactly know. There's guys on Twitter like Mossy Max. He probably knows um, how these things will work out. But again, because there's so many changes, uh, this is kind of why I wanted to make the video because I haven't seen any videos. Like I've been driving back and forth from the city I used to live in to the city I moved to. So I was like listening to stuff here and there. So maybe I kind of missed something. But again, I feel like a lot of people are kind of getting this information mixed up. So again, I just made notes uh, to talk about exactly how these will affect things. So pulse rifles, 20% global buff and 15% red bar buff. So legendaries will receive 38% more damage just straight up uh, to red bars and then 20% more overall. So again, to champions and everything. But then there's a minus 7.7% loss due to the loss of spec mods. So they talk right up here about how boss spec, taken spec, minor spec, major spec, and adept big one spec are all going away. All of these are 7.7% buff, and then taken spec, I think, is a 10% buff. So it's kind of nice that those are all going away, because now we can run things like backup mag, quick access sling, whatever else, uh, stuff that will help you. And like I said, overall, this is a net buff, because if you're running minor spec, you only get that 7.7% buff. Um, but yeah, so I did want to point that out. Legendary pulse rifles will get a 38% buff to red bars, but say you were running minor spec, that's going to be a 7.7% loss. And just for ease of math, we'll call that about a 30% damage bonus. But again, I don't know if that's subtracting or timesing by like 0.923 or whatever the math would be. So again, I don't know exactly how they shake out, but this is just kind of the purpose for me making this video is to say that just kind of give a 
an estimation of what the actual buff will be in game. And then uh, exotics, 38% more, but minus 10% on red bars from the exotic primary damage change, which I already talked about. So I said net 28% buff, but like I said, it could just be a 24.2% buff. So uh, again, this is why I like to script things because I'm probably repeating myself. Uh, but then the next thing I want to talk about is somewhere in this patch note they talked about on bosses. So this is bosses only. So if you didn't know, kinetics deal 10% more uh, damage at base on primary weapons and 15% more damage at base on, um, on special weapons. So if we look at something like the Supremacy... This thing is the GOAT, like rewind rounds, bait and switch. It's so good because it's a kinetic. So intrinsically, it's doing 15% more damage and uh, something like succession as well. So succession, my succession has Vorpal weapon. So that's a 15% bonus. So if you had, uh, what's the one? I can never remember how to spell it. I'll just search uh, sniper rifle because it's, uh, it's a really good, oh my God, I cannot type. <laughs> This one, Urua Kanji. So four times firing line. So firing line's a 20% buff, but these just intrinsically were doing 15% more. So it basically made any strand or stasis weapon just completely useless. And obviously you're only using like specials and, um, and heavies on bosses, or you should be. But that does bring me to the one thing I wanna talk about is Outbreak Perfected. I made a video on Outbreak and uh, we one phase the ogre boss in the Grasp of Avarice. So on bosses, Kinetic loses damage bonus. So minus 10% primary. So if we're just talking about Outbreak here, it's still gonna be about a 10% buff because it's getting that 20% global buff. It doesn't receive the red bar buff because it's a boss. So it's a 20% global buff. And then, uh, and then yeah, it's losing the 10% to Kinetic damage. So again, that's going to be a 10% net buff on bosses. And it's already really melting with that Rewind Rounds uh, extended mag roll. So yeah, Outbreak is going to be even better, but I just wanted to point that out. And then when we're talking about special weapons, they're going to lose minus 15%, but that is only on, um, on bosses. So that brings me to shotguns, which we'll get to in a second, but things like Until It's Return, this is a strand craftable shotgun. Uh, rapid fire frame, but it can get some really good rolls. So it can get cascade point, auto loading holster, which is really good, trench barrel, which is nice. You could get enhanced surrounded, uh, which is an extremely strong perk if you're able to proc enhanced surrounded. Vorpal weapon. So watch out for until it's return, depending on the type of damage phase you have. Uh, this thing could be really, really nasty. And then Imperial Decree is kind of like the goat because, again, it's kinetic. So it was receiving that 15% extra to bosses. So now it will still receive that 15% extra on something like a champion. So if you're able to proc surrounded or trench barrel on a champion, this thing is still going to wreck and it's going to be better than until it's return. But if we're just talking about a boss damage phase or like a boss type enemy weapon, uh, enemy type, um, then until it's return could be really good. And there's some other ones. There's some solar shotguns, uh, the one no remorse and stuff. Uh, Wastelander, again, it was really good because it was kinetic. And now this is just giving room for uh, things like strand and stasis weapons to breathe on bosses. So yeah, I just wanted to talk about that. And then speaking of the shotguns, uh, pellets are receiving a 10% buff, but again, you're losing 7.7 .7 from the spec mod. So um, it's really just like a 2.3% buff. And this doesn't affect like the really good exotic shotguns, which sucks. But one thing that could be really good, if we scroll down here, is duality. Uh, duality is the shotgun that is both a slug and a, uh, a pellet shotgun. And it can increase its damage up to 55%. And uh, slugs are getting a 9%. So anyways, I just wanted to point out duality and how I'm really curious with uh, how that will stack up. See, slug shotguns, 9%. Pellet shotguns 10. So duality could be really good. And then, yeah, just uh, these general play shotguns 
will be eating better now that uh, they're getting a bit of a buff. But again, you have to factor in that spec mod that you're losing. So then when we go to like fusion rifles, everything but 1k voices is getting 7%. Same with glade projectiles and same with sniper rifles. But they're losing 7.7% because of the spec mod loss. But overall, we'll just say it's a wash because on like a sniper, so I, I guess uh, champions got changed to boss spec, but they used to be major spec. So we'll talk about in the old days. So say you were running major spec, you wouldn't get that damage bonus to a boss. But now with this 7% buff, it's going to be dealing like that base amount of damage to a champion and a boss and a major and a minor because these are global buffs. So overall, all these 7% are a net a bit of a net gain, I would say, but then linear fusions, 5%, uh, but f uh, if you're typically only using them for like bosses and stuff, like you're not using a linear fusion for ad clear. So this means they're actually losing 2.7% from the loss of a spec mod. So if you don't have like boss spec on or adept big ones or something on your linear fusion, you're actually losing damage and linear fusions weren't even that great to begin with. So this is like really, really confusing to me because these kind of suck. So yeah, sorry if I'm all over the place, but I really just wanted to stress how just because these are 7% buffs doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to be a big buff in game because of the loss of the spec mods. I do really like that they're getting rid of spec mods because they were pretty much mandatory to run and now we can run what we want. But yeah, I did just want to point that out. So then uh, we go down to the increases just versus red bars. And this is where things get interesting because uh, legendary primaries have felt like shit for a long time. So something like an auto rifle, I was using Abyss Defiant and like in hard content and auto rifles just felt like shit, especially 360s. If you didn't know, kind of like the faster a weapon fires, uh, the stronger it is basically like for DPS. So these 360s, yeah, they're decent at range, but they just, they hit like wet noodles in my opinion in PVE. Uh, so this 15% buff to red bars, and that's usually what you're using a primary on as a red bar, is going to be very, very welcome. But again, I do want to point out how you're normally running a minor spec on your uh, primary weapon. So really, this will just be like a 7.3% gain. And then when we look at this, that's like, uh, sorry, I can't do math right now. 7.7. <laughs> it's like a 12%, 12.3% buff, not 20% assuming you were running minor spec, but bows already hit really hard. Even in GMs, you can like one shot the lowest tier of red bars and usually two shot the uh, like bit beefier red bars. So I wonder if this will make it. So anyways, this will be a very nice buff, but then you also have exotic bows and the exotic bows are very, very good. If we just type in bows, uh, yeah, like Vergloss Curve, Wish Ender is obviously a beast. Le Monarch, Hierarchy of Needs is getting, uh, like, is coming into the mainstream more and more. It's a very good weapon. Trinity Ghoul. So, yeah, these things are now going to be hitting even harder. Again, they lose the 10% uh, from the exotic primary weapon damage, but they're gaining 20%. So, again, I didn't do the math on it. So, if you times by 0 0.9, it might not quite be 10%. But either way, it's around a 10% gain. And then pulse rifles, again, I talked about this. This is 20% on top of their 15%. And then sidearms, uh, we have a couple sidearms here that are really going to shred. Um, I have always really liked Trespasser, and it is already really good. I like it because it kind of like auto reloads once you get the uh, perk going. So Trespasser is going to be really nasty. Final warning is going to be, it's already really nasty, so it's going to be even better. But again, remember this buff is only to red bars, but even still, uh, a lot of our sidearms are going to be hitting really good. Sidearms are already uh, low key, very good, uh, but now they're going to be even better. And then I do wonder if this buff applies to Forerunner and Indebted Kindness and Buried Bloodline, because if it does... Uh, that just makes them even better. I did a solo flawless run of the zero hour mission and I had minor spec on for a very specific reason. I don't have it on now, but I did have it on in that run because the vandals, it could one shot the dregs, but the vandals would be a two shot. But with minor spec, it took it to a one spot. So uh, one shot, I should say. So uh, 
if this applies to the rocket sidearms in the game, then that's going to be a very, very big buff on minor red bar enemies. So then if we go to submachine guns, again, you're losing 7.7. .7, so that's only a 2.3% buff. Because, uh, again, assuming you're running a minor spec. And SMGs aren't in a great place already. So auto rifles are basically going to be hitting damn near as hard as SMGs, I would guess. Uh, but they just have better range. So SMGs, uh, they're struggling a little bit. Hand cannons are already super good. Uh, and they're good on like majors, which is nice. But on minors, they're obviously really good. But this, again, if you were running a minor spec, is a bit of a net loss. Because you're losing 7.7. .7, so it's like a 2.7% nerf uh, to minors if you're running a minor spec. But again, overall, it's going to be better on bosses, better on champions, better on everything. So... Uh, yeah, hand cannons are already in a good place. And then I didn't talk about trace rifles yet, uh, but the trace rifles, uh, I think they got a global buff. Sorry, this is why I like to like script things. And uh... oh yeah, sorry, it's this. So reduced damage versus miners. This also happened to the trace rifles. So they're going from 40% to 30%, but then they're getting uh, a 20% buff to orange bars. And then they're also getting a 20% buff to red bars. So the exotic ones are losing 10%, but still they're going to be doing 20% more to orange bars and uh, I guess like net 10% to red bars. So trace rifles are going to be a lot better as well. And we actually have some really good trace rifles in the game and we're getting a heavy trace rifle in Final Shape. They've previewed it. But I did a Legend Onslaught run with Wave Splitter and Ger Falcons. And it was extremely, extremely strong. So, uh, yeah, these could be in a good spot. Prometheus Lens, me and my friends did like a meme run. And we didn't even have overload or overcharged trace rifle on. If we had, it would have been easier. But yeah, we did uh, Prometheus Lens. And it was pretty good for ad clear. And then uh, Egger Scepter is one of my favorite weapons in the game. So that's going to be doing really good. Cold Heart could be really interesting. Uh, this is always a fun gun. So yeah, trace rifles could be in a decent spot. Machine guns were already extremely strong and they were extremely strong in PvP and now they're getting 7% stronger. So this is a, a pretty insane buff in my opinion. Uh, but again, if you were running a spec mod, but machine guns were kind of tricky on what to spec into because red bars, they didn't really need the help. And then, so you'd maybe go major spec. So again, you're losing a little because of the spec mod, but overall machine guns just got better. And then swords, they're kind of the same. So if you look at the quest on Crota, you were running a boss spec, obviously. So you're actually losing 0.7% damage there on Crota uh, because of the loss of boss spec. But still, swords just aren't in the best spot. Um, but yeah, it is a bit of a buff because you're going to be doing more to red bars and bosses and champions and things like that. So yeah, again, whenever you see this 7%, it's basically a wash, but it makes it a little more universally good on like all enemy types. And then they reduce the splash, splash damage on these four weapons only by 10%. Uh, so they're still going to be really strong. And the other thing is that like Gravlance got a big buff uh, because it doesn't receive that 20% global buff and neither does revision zero, but it does receive the 15% buff to red bars and uh, Graviton Lance and revision zero were already good, even in like GM content. So yeah, those two weapons are going to be insane. Like get them in your inventory. And another one I didn't talk about with the pulse rifles. And I do want to highlight here is uh, bad juju is a weapon that I've always been partial to. And um, it's, it's got string of curses. And the one thing that uh, hurt it was you couldn't really get string of curses going in high end content. Uh, but if you could, it can go up to double damage in just five kills. And now it's getting again, like 38% overall buff, 20% here and 15% there, but it does lose the 10%. But either way, it's about a 24% buff. So watch out for bad juju. I think it's going to be really, really strong. Outbreak Perfected, I've soloed GMs with this back in the day, and now it's going to be even stronger. Clearly, I have to delete a couple because uh, I'm just going to be rocking the crafted one. But yes, also very strong. And then another one I wanted to talk about was Collective Obligation. I've always wanted to make a build around this 
because it is such a unique play style and I haven't had the chance to or the time to because we just haven't had Void in the Artifact for quite a long time. But Collective is going to be very, very strong because it can just spread Weaken. So it's already receiving these buffs. So again, because it's exotic, call it around 25% buff and it can spread Weaken, which is a 15%, obviously. And it could also spread Suppression and Volatile, depending how you're built into it. So Collective Obligation and Bad Juju, I will be running like early, early on into Final Shape because I'm just so excited to see how they feel. But then even things like uh, Darkest Before, I got the Heal Clip, Kill Clip, even though I'd prefer uh, Incandescent, but whatever. Either way, some of these Pulse Rifles will be really, really nice. So uh, get you some good Pulse Rifles before Final Shape if you can. Um, but yeah, I really wanted to point out Collective Obligation and Bad Juju. So then um, I'm just going to pull up my notes here because I don't want to talk about all the changes that they made. Uh, but I think I hit on most of these points. Oh yeah, so with the Auto Rifles, this was another one I wanted to talk about. Um, Quicksilver Storm. The change is only to kinetics on bosses, like I talked about, like uh, how primaries deal 10% more and specials deal 15% more. So Quicksilver, it still might be worth having a uh, kinetic version of, which I do, just depending on like the surge. Like if it's Strand Surge, obviously that's a 25% buff. But if there is no Strand Surge and you're matching like your subclass to the surge, then the kinetic version of Quicksilver Storm will still do more damage to everything but bosses. And again, I think champions, because boss spec works on them, they might be now coded as bosses. I don't know. Because they still can like be frozen and stuff. So I feel like they're still majors, even though boss spec applies to them. But anyways, I just wanted to point that out, how that uh, kinetic 10% buff will still apply to Quicksilver on everything but bosses. So I did want to point that out. And then if we go back to autos for a second, there's another couple of auto rifles I'm really excited about. Uh, I've always liked Centrifuge. It's a very cool play style and it can blind, which uh, blind is one of the strongest verbs in the game. So very good. Ross Arago, a lot of people like for a legendary and now it's just going to be dealing 15% more to red bars. And with Onslaught, it could already chew through red bars pretty good. So that's very exciting. Sweet Business hits really hard. But this is the one I'm most excited for, Necrochasm. If we scroll down here, they do talk about Necro somewhere uh, right here. So Add Clear Roll wasn't as strong as we'd like, so we've buffed it and replaced it with the Outlaw perk. Um, so it's getting one for Thrall right here. Damaging three combatants in quick succession provides a period of increased damage, range, and aim assist. Assuming this will be like 30 or 35%, like one for all is, I'm guessing. And then uh, longer burn damage and increased reload speed on the intrinsic. So really fast reload. This thing, uh, Osteostriga is getting a nerf. It made it too easy to spread poison across a whole encounter. Uh, so there's a four second cooldown on the poison burst on kills from Striga. This could really hurt it, especially for ad clear. I mean, it still does damage over time. So that just in destiny is a strong, strong thing. But if you're just looking for a mass ad clear primary now, Necro's almost going to be more your go-to over Striga. And especially as long as you can hit crits. And remember, this is increasing damage, but when you proc, uh, like the reload or whatever, it also increases the fire rate. So this thing is going to be hitting extremely hard on red bars, and I'm super pumped to play with Necrochasm. So that was another weapon I really wanted to highlight. And then Cerberus is also getting a change. Uh, see if I can find it here. Truth, Queenbreaker, Cerberus. Uh, Focus Fire. So it was limited because it was always available. You could just do that uh, quick reload. So now they've changed it to after a kill. So focus fire now will activate on special reloads following a kill. So think like kill clip, but no longer reduce range or rate of fire. So again, this is already getting a 15% buff to red bars with like the balance changes, um, but it's losing 10% because it's an exotic primary. But even still, this thing could like chunk down champions and things like that. Like it is a very strong weapon. It's kind of slept on. Uh, but yeah, I'm very excited to see Cerberus. And then uh, let's just talk about a few of these other changes really quick. So I'm not too concerned about any of these. Symmetry, uh, Scout Rifles, I didn't really mention it, I don't think. But Scout Rifles also got the, was it the 20% damage bonus? 
God, why can't I find it? Yeah, scout rifle is 20%. So symmetry could be uh, eaten pretty good as well. And then, anyways, back down to where we were. Again, I'm not too concerned. This is just like changing how wolf pack rounds look. So this is a nice change, but this should be like five seconds minimum in my uh, opinion. The darkness ball, it gives it a buff basically. Talked about this, talked about this. This was a very annoying change. Lament is one of my favorite weapons because it's so aggressive and allows you to be so aggressive even in end game content like GMs. They've reduced the healing effect, which fine, whatever. That was very strong for keeping you alive. Uh, but I don't like this. The chained like rev attack, if you do, like the higher the combo you do, the less damage you're going to be doing on that high combo. And this was so nice for just like deleting champions. So I think it still will be really strong, but I don't, I didn't see it being like an outlier. So I don't understand that nerf. Uh, Dead Man's Tail, basically they're just making it better in PVE, 15% damage bonus at max stacks. That's really nice. Colony will be very interesting. This thing low key could be like an ad clear menace. Uh, for years, I used it in the Queen's Walk in um, uh, like at the end of Riven, at the end of Last Wish, because you're always on the move. So it's really easy to just shoot out these insectoids because they just track and kill all the enemies. So now it'll just be more ammo efficient because it'll kill an enemy and then spawn a new robot. And the higher the tier of the enemy killed, you can spawn up to five little tracking robots. So this thing could be an ad clear monster. Truth, I pretty much memed on in my worst exotic weapons video because it is trash, uh, but they're increasing the total reserves above what it already is. And they already had got a reserve bump and they're making it deal more damage and it can hold three in the mag. So this could be like a really good burst uh, damage weapon. So I'm very curious about Truth. Queen Breaker, I soloed the Lake of Shadows GM with it just for the blinding effect, but it was pathetic uh, how little damage it did. So increased damage versus bosses, mini bosses, champions, and vehicles by 12%, plus linears are getting that 5% buff. So I talked about how on legendary linears, that's actually a nerf because you're usually using it for a boss damage phase. So you're actually losing like 2.7% damage. But on these, on exotics, you can't put spec mods on them. So basically it's getting a 17% damage buff overall which is actually pretty nice and probably what it needs because its damage output was really shit and increased the uh, ammo by three. So watch out for Queen's Breaker. It's actually a really good utility weapon. Bastion, I'm very curious about. Like if this works like Trench Barrel, which is a 50% damage buff, this could be extremely, extremely strong. And then it buffs your melee damage. So people might be able to do some interesting things with like Bonk Hammer or Worm Gods or stuff like that. So a very, very interesting weapon to keep an eye on. Ariana's Vow, the GOAT uh, back in the day for stunning champions, like way back when, when champions were first introduced. Uh, now breaking a match shield or piercing a champion's barrier will cause the target to ignite. So match shield, so I'm assuming that's only a solar shield. And then uh, piercing a barrier champion, which is kind of what this weapon's used for, will cause the ignition. So that could be really, really strong, especially if the ignitions can kind of chain, like if there's lots of enemies around. Uh, the one thing I would like to see is barrier knights. Hopefully they fix them so that they can take crit damage in the final shape because it, that's been bugged for a long ass time. And it really hurts Ariana's vow because Ariana's does extra damage until you miss a crit. So yeah, that's where it needs help really is just uh, fixing that. But anyways... Nice little buff for Ariana's because it's been out of the meta for a long, long time and uh, it needed that. And then Deterministic Chaos, again, I memed on this in my worst exotic videos. It gets uh, anti-barrier intrinsically now, which is really nice. And then it will make Volatile every 4th and then every 16th weaken. So it actually could be decent on champions now because you could apply a weaken pretty quickly, apply Volatile quite quickly, which deals more damage. So yeah, that'll be very nice. And then, um, oh yes, the chill clip changes. I really wanted to talk about these. Uh, so if you didn't know, in my subclass school, I said if you're radiant, uh, chill clip, it can slow enemies, but it won't stun overloads with the slow. Now it does. I'm not sure when that changed, probably within to the light, uh, but my video was already out by then. But anyways, 
that's probably due to like prismatic and they don't want things overriding each other. So that right there is a nice little change because we're going to be radiant like so much in the future, especially on prismatic, I think. But anyway, something like lingering dread. So a one shot magazine. So it was almost impossible to freeze something because the slow would wear off because it would only apply 40 stacks of slow. So you would need to land three GLs to get the, uh, to get the freeze, which is pretty much impossible with a GL. And that was because Riptide, like look at this, 460 charge time. So it could apply freeze really quickly. So they nerfed Chill Clip on everything. Now it's only being nerfed on these rapid fire fusions. So this is gonna be the new go-to. This Chill Clip, uh, it's probably going to be 50 stacks of slow. I don't know. But basically, it's going to be able to slow in two shots. It's a 740 charge time. I've got mine with accelerated coils and charge time masterwork, which in my opinion is what you want. But yeah, get that and you'll be able to freeze in two shots. So that'll be really good on like unstoppables or like freezing a tormentor or something. Just two quick shots at a 740 charge time. And then this one is a lot slower, but it's got reconstruction. So like everything will always have chill clip. So this is just a random drop, but if you get it, definitely hang on to it. And like I said, this lingering dread will now not be useless. Well, no, this, this role is definitely not useless. Don't get me wrong, but it will actually be able to like, uh, freeze things. So yeah, I really wanted to talk about the chill clip changes. Um, what else did I have? Uh, yeah, Skyburner's Oath, uh, Polaris Lance, Touch of Malice, Wicked Implement. They're already very good. And with that Scout Rifle change to Red Bars, they're going to be even better. So that's really nice. Uh, Touch of Malice could be a little more difficult to use with like the nerfs to Well of Radiance. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out. Um, yeah. I guess that was pretty much it. So sorry it was so rambly, but again, I really wanted to talk about how these changes would actually affect in-game because again, for the pulse rifles, there was like three different changes going on on exotic pulse rifles because they're losing 10% to red bars, but they're gaining 20% overall. Then they're gaining 15% to red bars again. Uh, so like big buff for the legendaries, but not as big for the exotics. And then there was also the change to uh, boss damage. Uh, again, I don't know where it is, but uh, bosses taking more damage to um, kinetic weapons. And now on bosses only, strand and stasis weapons will be relevant again. So yeah, I that was the biggest thing I wanted to drive home was kind of the numbers and how those shake out for exotic pulse rifles and yeah just kind of all the weapons again i talked about on the linear fusions how this is actually a nerf for legendary linear fusions uh so kind of weird but whatever and yeah anyways very rambly like i said my next videos will kind of be in this same vein so let me know down in the comments if this is fine but i don't really have much of a choice because i don't get my pc till saturday and uh then i have to set it all up obviously and yeah, I just wanted to more get this info out on the weekend before Final Shape uh, so you could like really understand what's going on because I didn't want it all releasing like during Final Shape, obviously, when I would actually have time and I can't even get on the game Monday because the game is down. So yeah, I did just want to make this video, even though it was kind of all over the place. But yeah, I really wanted to just... Uh, even for myself, I wanted to make these notes to really get a grasp on it because like I said, none of the videos I watched really uh, laid it out for me properly and like writing stuff down just really helps me remember things and whatever else. So yeah, I just wanted to make this video because they say if you can teach something, then you understand it. And if I'm explaining it to you, then that means I understand it. So I'm going to be good to go in the final shape. Anyways, I should stop rambling now. I hope it was helpful. Uh, leave a like and comment and all that stuff. And uh, thanks for watching. Take care.